I've used behavioral science in my own life is using commitment devices. So like a lot of us, I probably don't go to the gym as much as I should, you know, I'm pretty busy and I kind of hate it. So it's really easy to come up with excuses not to go. So what I've done is use a website called stick.com developed by Dean Carlin and colleagues at Yale University. And what this website does is it allows you to set yourself a goal, set yourself a time frame in which to achieve that goal and an amount of money that you'll lose if you're not successful. So for me, it was things like going to the gym three times a week for eight weeks, and if I'm unsuccessful, then I'll lose 50 pounds. Now where it gets interesting is where that money goes. So it can either go to a friend or family member who might be refereeing your behavior, or it can go to a charity, or it can go to an anti-charity. So these are really divisive causes that people feel really strongly about. Things like fox hunting in the UK, uh, gun control in the US, there are political parties, there are football teams. And for me personally, I found it really focuses my mind to know that if I don't get up and go to the gym, then someone like Donald Trump will be receiving my hard-earned cash. As an accidental behavior economist, of course, you look for ways in which you can uh, put the insights you gained uh, to good use in your personal life. And there are a couple of things that I do often. In fact, one of them I do on a permanent basis. The first one is uh, a nudge to stop forgetting things. Um, like, I guess like many people, I used to forget uh, when I needed to take something, whether it's a book or a box of chocolates or a document to the person I was going to visit. Uh, and halfway you realize that you've left it at home. Whenever uh, I now know I need to take something, I at once I take out my car keys and place them next to the object that I need to take with me. Um, and so by definition, I cannot leave the house. I, cannot, uh, I can certainly not get into my car and drive away without my keys. So I, uh, I have to go look for my keys. But I also find that the act of putting my keys in an unusual place makes me remember that I placed them there and why I placed them there. And so I will, I will remember, I will know that I need to take this object. So, and I very, very rarely forget to take something now I use this, this trick, um, even though I've had to place my keys in the fridge on occasion. The other thing I do is I, uh, I have the, the clock on my phone is six minutes fast. Um, in, in fact, the clock in my car is six minutes fast as well. And the, I know, of course, that it's six minutes fast and I, I, it's impossible to fool yourself, but I do find that the anchoring effect is so strong that whenever I look at my phone and it says 3 p.m., that I will act as if it is 3 p.m., even though I know it's only 2.54. And I find that very useful um, because it means I am never late. Well, I'm almost never late. One way I use behavioral science in my life is I choose to work on the second floor of my house and not in the kitchen. Because when I work in the kitchen, I eat all the time without realizing it or intending to. And when I eat upstairs, the food's just not there. And so I don't eat that much. I would think that's behavioral science because it's some version of friction, introducing friction and also uh, attention, not having food uh, be in my attention. And it's also a combination of associative memory, habits and cues. So that's one way. One of the ways that I apply behavioral science to my own life is through the use of temptation bundling. This is a way to solve for self-control problems. So you pair something that's instantly gratifying and hedonic with something that's not so fun to do, but good for you in the long term, such as eating well or exercise. So the ways that I do it, um, sometimes if I have a long commute for work that I'm kind of wanting to put off or you know I just don't want to do it, I'll load up my favorite podcasts to my phone before the drive and, and play those. And another way, is I don't actually enjoy clothes shopping. I don't think it's that fun, but I do enjoy spending time with my friends. And so there's certain friends that really I only hang out with when we're clothes shopping together. And as a result, the shopping's more likely to happen and I'm better dressed for it. And that's temptation bundling. Mm -hmm. 